All right, and uh, now I get to, I have the honor and the privilege of introducing this next gentleman. He's going to be presenting an original piece for you called Crazy. Give it up for Trevor Smith, everybody. All right, Trevor Smith, everybody, keep it going for him. Hi, everybody. My name's Trevor Smith. Um, I'd like... I never thought I'd be, op uh, be opened up by a comedian. <laughs> so, uh, start, start off by playing a song for you guys. It's called Crazy. Hey, this might be crazy, but I don't know anymore. When I first saw you, you chuckled, said no more. I knew what that meant, and now I'm full of regret of all the time that I chose the decline. Standing around with my dream of thoughts, I don't know how or what to say. Circling. could muster all of my might to ask you out and whether you'd reply. I never got there as I'm still at the door, standing around with my train of thoughts. I don't know how or what to say. Circling I had a thought in the back of my mind That I wasn't good enough for you and I I've always wondered what it'd be like Sitting by the sunset just you and I But I'll never know until I go Find myself with you in my throne Thank you. <clears throat> I'm a little, a little nervous still. Uh, my name's Trevor, Trevor Smith. Um, this song, I don't know how I put it, was written about this uh, girl I like in <laughs> college. She doesn't know I like her, but this song's about her. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, before I start, start, I'd like to thank the Tourette's Association for inviting me and my family out here to speak to you all and play. Um, as I said, I'm, my name's Trevor. I recently turned 18 years old, and I am a college student in Iowa. <clears throat> I also have Tourette's syndrome, if it isn't already obvious. <laughs> um, so my, my tics started to introduce themselves to me when I was about seven years old. Unfortunately, they weren't the type of, the the type of acquaintance you meet once and you never meet again for the rest of your life. 
My tics are more like that friend who crashes on your couch, he eats all your food, he breaks your favorite guitar, embarrasses you in front of every girl you meet, and you wake up 11 years later and he's still there. Uh, remembering back to my initial diagnosis, the doctor said that there was a good chance that I would outgrow at least some of my tics after I reached puberty. However, puberty has come and gone, if you couldn't tell by my five o'clock shadow. <laughs> um, in fact, it was around that time where my tics, it was around this time when my tics became much worse around puberty. I have tics from my head to my toes. My body jerks, twists, and contorts every waking second of my life. And each day, these constant <clears throat> movements are damaging my body and causing me pain. Socially, having Tourette's syndrome hasn't been very easy. I'm noticed and stared at everywhere I go. I've always had more than my fair share of bullying from both kids and adults. <clears throat> Sorry. Sometimes I felt as though I was heading into a war zone when I stepped on the school bus every day. On top of that, my tics have also made learning in public school physically difficult. Even reading is a challenge for me since my head is always moving. So my parents started homeschooling me in middle school. <clears throat> this, this was the only option we had to give me a productive and safe learning environment. <clears throat> At home, I found that I was able to learn faster with audio textbooks and online curriculums. And by not being bullied all day long, I ended up graduating from high school at 15 years old. <clears throat> to many, having such a severe case of Tourette's syndrome might seem like a roadblock at times, but I think it's important that we, had, that we never accept defeat before we've even tried something. <clears throat> Some scholars suspect that Mozart had Tourette's syndrome. He was known to be extremely fidgety, and he would often blurt out obscenities. In spite of this, he was a musical genius. Uh, he was able to put notes together in, way, in ways that would baffle other musicians. <clears throat> on, on paper, they, they couldn't understand how the notes could possibly work, but when they heard the piece of, the piece of music played, they were astonished by its beauty and complexity. <clears throat> Maybe, <clears throat> Maybe there is more to Tourette's than we realize. What if this condition has our brains wired in such a way that we think and solve problems in ways that most people can't? Maybe the vocal and physical tics we experience are simply a side effect of this unique wiring. <clears throat> when I read that hypothesis about Mozart, I already had a desire to play music. Though knowing that Mozart was possibly a lot like me, this really inspired me to not just be a musician, but to be a great musician. Um, when I told my parents I, weren't, I wanted to learn how to play music, they didn't hesitate to buy me my first guitar. My parents were curious to see if I could even ever play music with the ticks, considering that I am always in motion. But they didn't want to discourage me from discourage me or treat me differently because of my the tics. In fact, they wanted me to work past my tics and learn not only music, but how to live with the tics as well. They didn't want me to feel like I was less than or that I was incapable of achieving my goals. Learning an instrument is hard for anyone, but the difficulty was certainly higher for me since I had to play through my tics as well. After a lot of practice, the notes I began to play sounded like music, and it started to sound like good music, as you just heard now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we also noticed something magical happening. When I got into a groove playing, my tics would relax just enough to allow me to play with ease. People often comment on the transformation they witness when I perform. Quite a bit. Uh, 
eventually, I learned to play the piano, bass, and drums. At around 16 years old, I joined my first band, and I also began writing my own songs, as you also just witnessed. <laughs> um, you, um, <clears throat> music has been an incredibly positive part of my life. It has helped increase my confidence and bring relief to my tics. During those moments when, I re when my tics relax, it gives me a glimpse of what life could be like without the constant tics caused by Tourette's. <clears throat> if I could play guitar all day long, I would, but unfortunately this just isn't practical. After 11 years of these constant tics, my joints and muscles have taken a lot of abuse I'm developing arthritis, and we're concerned about my neck, which has a certain neck injury, actually. It's very common to people in threats with such severity. So I need to find another way to control my tics and stop the damage they are doing to my body. <clears throat> I work my way through all of the medications and non-invasive therapies out there for Tourette's syndrome. But unfortunately, none of them work for me. In December of 2016, the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota approved me for the deep brain stimulation surgery. For those of you who are unaware, this is a procedure where two electrodes are implanted in the brain and they give off electrical stimulation that can control the tics and tremors caused by movement disorders, in this case, threats. <laughs> Though it is almost two years later, I have still not had this procedure done because our health insurance will not pay for it. In fact, I have been denied coverage for deep brain stimulation surgery by three different medical insurance companies. In their denials, <coughs> they categorized deep brain stimulation as experimental because it is not FDA approved for Tourette syndrome specifically. And this means that we have no legal recourse for their denials. <laughs> because there are so many of us that have Tourette syndrome so severe that surgery is even considered, the makers of the deep brain stimulation device would never see a return on the millions and millions of dollars it would take to get FDA approval. This means that for those of us who need deep brain stimulation for Tourette's, we'll have to find a way to pay for this surgery out of pocket. The cost of my surgery will be $160,000. This isn't a number that's affordable for most families, including mine. So we had to start a fundraising campaign. Last month, I was given the opportunity to record two of my songs through the generosity of Sweetwater Music in Fort Wayne, Indiana. These songs will soon be available to download, and the money that is earned will go towards my surgery. In just a few weeks, we'll be announcing the release dates for my, for my songs on my Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash DBS for Trevor. Check back regularly. <laughs> um, if my story could inspire just one person, that would be incredible. If you have Tourette's syndrome and you have a dream to do something that you worry you won't be able to do, whether it is to play music, be a comedian, or do something entirely different, I'm here to show you that you can accomplish your goals if you're willing to work hard and believe in yourself. <clears throat> also, in spreading awareness about the need to get deep brain stimulation, FDA approved for Tourette's, so <clears throat> I hope that my story will somehow further that cause so that the medical insurance companies will pay for this life-changing procedure for anyone that needs it for threats the first time. So thank you all for allowing me to share my story and my song with you this evening. Absolutely keep that round of applause going for Trevor. That was, that, that was incredible. And I love the song, so I'm gonna go ahead and download it. You let me know when that comes out. <laughs>